How do we understand stories? In my family, stories were really important. Inference is key to understanding a story. A good story doesn't include all of the information that you need to understand it. So for example, if I said, uh, Sally got lunch at McDonald's, you can infer that Sally probably had a burger or maybe a salad, but she didn't have pizza or a taco. That's inference, going beyond the information given based on your knowledge of the world. And it's a critical aspect of comprehension. You can't understand a sentence or a story without inference. A story is coherent if the inferences that people have to draw aren't too crazy, right? So um, there are a lot of different kinds of inferences. My students know, do not need to know the names of the different kinds of inferences, but I'm just giving you examples here. So we have to make inferences every time someone uses a pronoun. If I say Sally lost her bike at the mall, well, who is her? We infer that it's Sally and not someone else who hasn't been in introduced to the story. Uh, if I say uh, Ingrid drove to work, I infer that she did so in a car or maybe a motorcycle or a scooter, but she didn't use a tractor or a tank. Inference. Um, if I'm given the sentence, John pushed a pin in the balloon, the balloon burst, I infer that the pin had something to do with the burst. Okay, so I'm making coherence. I'm putting things together. What else do we do when we hear stories? Well, we create a world inside of our head that represents that story. And how, what is that world like? Well, what's important is what we remember is the creation of the world in our head and not the words. So if I ask you, did this sentence appear in a story? You won't know. But if I ask you, did a particular event happen in a story? If that's in your representation of the story, you'll remember it. A really good story is one where we put ourselves in the middle of the action. And research has shown that oftentimes when you hear a story, you are indeed creating a situation in your head where the story is happening to you. Um, if not, what we tend to do is put ourselves in the position of the protagonist in a story, which is kind of interesting. So how do we know we create these representations when we hear stories? Well, here is a cool study. They had subjects read a sentence that described an object, and then right after each sentence, there was a picture that appeared, and the picture described the object, but maybe not in the same orientation or performing the same action as what was described in the sentence that I just read. Maybe the sentence that I read is, the ranger saw the eagle in the sky. And then I'm shown one of two pictures, either the picture on the bottom left or the bottom right. If I'm shown the picture on the bottom left, which is consistent with the sentence, the ranger saw the eagle in the sky, I'm faster at saying yes than if you show me an eagle doing something different. Yeah, the task is, is this the object that was just in the sentence, right? If what I read instead was the ranger saw the eagle in its nest, and you ask me, does this picture display an eagle? I'm gonna be faster at saying, yes, it displays an eagle if that eagle is in the position that I just read about in a nest. So this supports the idea that when I hear a story or read a story, I'm literally creating an image of that story. I'm not just hanging onto the words, but I'm in my mind, I'm creating an image or I'm creating that world that's being described to me in this story. And the last bit, did you know you use your motor system to understand stories? Yep. If you read or hear about a story that has to do with say soccer players, your motor cortex, the part that is sensitive to your feet is going to fire. If you read a story about, say, volleyball players, where a lot of it is about the hands, there's going to be neural activity in the hand portion of your motor system. Cool. Thanks.